One of my favorite interviews probably ever was Bruce McNall. What a fascinating character he was. And of course had gone to jail and then I knew he was writing his book and, but you know, was just so interested in his story and it took about a year for me to to get through to him. Um, But just a fascinating guy. Like you, you couldn't help but go away going, wow, he's such a likable guy. And he said, well, you know, when you have stuff, people just trust you. And you know, because as, as you Such know, he's a likable criminal. Exactly, <laughs> I know. What you're and he says, and you get caught up in it. But he's, you know, here he was just out of jail and and kind of lost everything. And he yeah. said, I know this sounds cliche, but I'm really happy because when you have stuff, it kind of complicates your life. Yeah. Anyway, he was a fa- fascinating guy. Um, but some of my favorite stories over the years, obviously, have involved hockey players, but sometimes have nothing to do with hockey. For sure, it's about the people. Um, and whether that's, I mean, the Bobby Ryan story to yeah, me is just story. actually one of the most great. amazing stories I've ever heard in my life. I, I remember mean, he tweeted at you to thank you for the way you did it. Yeah, yeah. well, he, he I, you know, it's all about trust. You guys know yeah. it too. I mean, you're, you're giving me the accolades, but you guys are wonderful interviewers yourself. And all you want to do is, is have your interview subject feel comfortable with you and, and feel like you're just having a conversation and, and can share it. Mm. Uh, you did some uh, movie stars too. I remember. Yeah, I remember during the lockout. You know when there's a lockout and you're a hockey reporter and yeah. you can't talk to hockey players. You're I'm, like, I'm oh, familiar boy. with those. I guess yeah. It's like okay, I got to find something to do. So I was able to connect with um, some Hollywood studios, and during that time, there were a lot of sports movies that were coming out, and they would always do these movie junkets. So hey, we're a sports network. I can go to L.A. and. I interviewed Brad Pitt and Billy Bean for Moneyball. No way. Oh yeah, which was amazing. Um, I interviewed George Clooney and John Krasinski for Leatherheads, the, the football movie. The football movie wasn't so great, but it was really cool to talk to them. <laughs> well, while you were talking to them, did you say, I'm not sure this movie's that good? I did not, okay, did not share that it. with them at that time, no. Okay. Um, interviewed Burt Reynolds and Adam Sandler for the, the Longest Yard remake. Nice. And Billy Bob Thornton for the Bad News Bears. Like that was, it, it was pretty cool. Like there were a lot of great sports movies. Like, and I'm sort of sitting here going, I cannot believe that I am in the same room interviewing. And actually, um, The Rock uh, oh, yeah. for Gridiron fun. Gang for that one. So yeah, I've. Um, thanks for reminding me. I've yeah, I've had some fun over the years. I've had no, some like, fun. Like Simmer, you've you've done it. You've done a ton. We can we can. I want to talk to you about the Hockey Hall of Fame as well, but. Um, take us to a young Christine Simpson in London. Wait, well, well, so before we go to a young Christine Simpson There's another, in London. Everyone's yeah. used to the interruptions okay. on the podcast, yeah. right? As a, okay. These are just suggestions that I bring up. So you don't have to say, uh-huh. but like, give us an example of a time you had an interview and you walked out of there and you're like, I really yeah. hate that person yeah. right now. Because we all have them. Hates a strong word, mm-hmm. but I do remember once interviewing Alex Mogilny, and I just felt he was so disinterested and gave what I thought because you know, in the moment, you're like, he's hating this, and he's just giving like really curt, almost, almost rude answers. And so, you know, I'm going through all my questions and thinking, I can't get, I can't engage him at all. So I went back to the office thinking, oh, my editor's gonna kill it, I got nothing here. And then he started like just taking the snippets out of, of not only what he said, but how he said it. And it actually turned out to be a really interesting piece that kind of told you more about him and his personality than I thought. I just thought I was failing as an interviewer, but it was more, he doesn't care what you think. He doesn't care what, you know, you're, he's not gonna come up with the cliche answer. Yeah. He's just gonna give you the one word or the two words. And it, it actually made me understand a little bit more about him and turn out a little better than I thought. You know, it's, it's so funny you say that because if I ever have a bad interview, I never, I almost never blame the guest. I always say, I did my it. questions suck. Yeah, and that's usually true. Yeah. I mean, not of Thanks, just Christine. you, but of that's, me. That's, no, of me too. Thanks we for coming out, great. Christine. Really glad we invited you here. <laughs> Here's your hat, what's your hurry? My favorite, my favorite Alexander McGillney moment, it was a Leafs playoff series. Uh, was it Carolina? I can't. He was. Anyway, it was a scrum with Alex McGillney. It was game one, and I think it was Bob Harwood from oh, yeah. Lease TV mm-hmm. who asked McGillney if he felt any pressure before a game one. It was a big series for the Maple Leafs, big playoff moment, and McGillney looked at him and said, "Pressure? 
And in a great line, I'll never forget, he said, I don't feel pressure for hockey. The only pressure I feel is in the morning after my first cup of coffee. <laughs> That's how I'll always remember it. Alex McGill. Whole mm-hmm. different kind of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> like that one for each? That was very good. I like that. McGillney was, he had an incredible sense of humor. Yep. Incredible. All right. Young Christine Simpson running around London. Mm-hmm. Well, earlier you guys were mentioning the ice house down the way there. It, it was yeah. London Gardens when I was going to it to watch <laughs> my brother Dave, uh, former captain of the London Knights. I mean, yep. that was obviously... Shattering records. Yeah. Well, still to this day, I still cannot believe yep. he holds a single season record for points by a London Knight. Like, how crazy is that when you consider all of the amazing players that have played for the London Knights. How crazy is that, Mr. Horvat? I know, I was gonna say, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you. <laughs> no, but you know, it was, we grew up in Oak Ridge, so West London, and yeah. like every Saturday night between, so I'm the sister between Dave, my older brother, and Craig, my younger brother. So yeah, we just spent, every Saturday night was at Oak Ridge Arena, uh, Craig would play, then Dave would play, then we'd come home and watch Hockey Night in Canada. So I was a rink rat, I just spent all the time around either Oak Ridge, or then they both played uh, Junior B for the London Diamonds, and then of course Dave with the Knights, Craig uh, went to Michigan State, but at the time it's like, and our sister, the eldest, she had no interest whatsoever, Mm -hmm. and I think birth order has something to do with it, because she was old enough to stay at home, whereas they wanted just to, yeah, drag me along, but little did I know at that time it was creating my love for hockey, my knowledge of hockey, and I absolutely feel I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today if I didn't grow up in my family with my two brothers. 